And we are back. Earlier this week, the Food and Drug Administration approved AstraZeneca and Sanofi's shot that protects infants and toddlers from the respiratory syn... I, I have tried to say this so many times. Shoes. <laughs> this is like, my dyslexia is like, oh, we're not going to say that. <laughs> this is, why don't you say it, doctor? Respiratory syncytial virus. Let's call it RSV. At RSV. We're just going to call it RSV. And I should introduce my guest, Dr. Mobin Rathor, Professor and Chief of Pediatric Infectious Diseases and Immunology at UF Health Jax. And he's here with me now to talk about RSV. Okay. So tell me, RSV, who can catch it? Well, thank you, Alan. Good to have you. Yeah, good uh, to be here. Uh, so RSV is an infection that almost all children get by the time they turn two years of age, mm -hmm. sort of a rite of passage. And as this has been a, a serious illness in children for a long time. Last mm -hmm. two seasons, last two years, it's been worse. We have seen a lot more kids sick in the hospital, kids dying of it. So it's been a you know, really terrible last two seasons. It seems to be getting worse. So, I, and we have thus far, we uh, did not have, we don't have a treatment for it. That's a huge thing. Is it, has it gotten worse because of COVID? It feels like I didn't hear much about RSV until COVID happened. Well, first of all, COVID took all the space, so you didn't hear about it. But we have known in the healthcare field forever. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I can tell you, when I even started my training, it was a huge issue. So okay. we have significant improvement. Now we have no treatment. We now have a prevention for this, which we have to give through the RSV season, which traditionally is late September and, uh, until about March. But in Florida, it could be 10 months. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can give some medication to uh, high-risk, vulnerable children uh, to prevent it, but it has to be given five times every once a month, five months. Oh, wow. Okay. But this new medication is exciting because you only have to give one of them. So is this new medication, is it a vaccine or is it? Yeah, I, I would like you to think of it like a vaccine, except in a vaccine, when I get a vaccine shot, which I have gotten all my vaccines, uh, I, my body produces antibodies. Mm -hmm. The beauty here is because the little babies, children cannot produce this sometimes. They're not as the immune system is not as well developed. So this, you actually give that antibody. It's a monoclonal antibody. It's not derived from humans. So you can give it to the, 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 hum, uh, the ch little infants uh, and then it'll last you for the whole season, six months or okay. longer. Okay, so, but, but you have to come back and get it again. So uh, most children are the younger infants, less, less than a year. Uh -huh. Some children get it in second year of life also. So it's really for the infants who are going to be... Uh, in the infant age group during the season, but there's also can be given the second season because some two-year-olds also get. The idea really is, RSV is very common, mm -hmm. okay? But we only see the tip of the iceberg for the children who are admitted to the hospital or get very sick. So really, should this vaccine be given to all children to protect all of them? It remains to be seen. The Centers for Disease Control and uh, American Academy of Pediatrics will come up with the recommendation soon. I don't know exactly where it is going. It seems it may go towards giving it all children, but definitely it will be a, a recommended for giving to high risk children. High risk children would that be children that like uh, have, you know, breathing issues like like asthma, so to speak. So these are premature babies, okay, uh, and children who have chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, other chronic conditions that puts them at high risk for complications of RSV. Mm -hmm. So all of those they already get this uh, preventive medicine, but they're one shot for five months, consecutive months. They will. Hopefully, all of them will just get this one shot. What that does is, you can if you miss a dose in this five months, you're not protected. Yeah. So one dose, you're protected for the okay. whole season. Let me ask you a question, like just to pull back a little bit from um, RSV, but but to talk specifically about vaccines and how it's changed over specifically after COVID, because if it feels like prior to COVID vaccines like I, I you know i heard a small group of people that were anti-vaccine and then during COVID, it it just blew up like a lot of people do not trust vaccines now do you are you seeing that in in your practice so let me <clears throat> set the stage first of all the vaccines are the best most effective safest tool in our toolbox mm -hmm. i my children have gotten all possible vaccines my family all possible vaccines i cannot give you a better recommendation than that yes uh, so to answer your question specifically, yes, there seems to be a more of this anti-vaccine uh, uh, situation right now, and certainly we have seen that. And the you know that on top of the fact that in the pandemic, um, a lot of children would not be able to get to the doctor. They're seeing uh, f 
lower level of vaccine uh, vaccinations. We have to continue to work. We have to provide the public with the right information. There's so much misinformation. Information does not equate to knowledge. Right. So I think it's important that we tell people the vaccines are safe, they're effective. We have systems in place that even if there's a signal of a problem with the vaccine, the, 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 the authorities will stop that. All right, and we've got a call. Chris in Clearwater, please keep it on topic and keep it brief. Chris, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, I'm curious because uh, here in Clearwater, I listen to uh, community on the community-sponsored station WMNF. Uh, Fred Harvey, Dr. Fred Harvey, has a weekly show on Mondays, and and he said, uh, like this past Monday, he's seeing uh, an increase in mold infections as well as um, other infections. I've seen other doctors uh, here locally mention um, this. Dr. Fred Harvey says. Uh, as well as the other doctors, because the lowering of the immune system from those, uh, the other CD4, CD8, T lymphocyte cell counts going so low that they're clinically uh, have AIDS even, and it's the only those who've received the COVID shots. And there are studies from Dr. Bruce Patterson that Dr. Harvey mentions showing that the spike protein continues to be made by those who've received the mRNA shots. Those are the Pfizer and Moderna shots which causes uh, a lot of you know, the studies show cardiovascular issues, myocarditis, blood clots, and uh, well, let's and let's let's let's, let's hear from let's hear from the doctor before we, we, we go into that. Can can do you have any response to that? Absolutely. You know, all vaccines, all medications, a risk benefit issue. First of all, none of that has really been proven. Uh, that's science. You keep on looking at things, and you have to have uh, really evidence to support that. Just because uh, there is a little bit of evidence doesn't mean that it is what causes it. I'll give you an example. Just from this morning, as you heard, that we have now found that a gene that uh, people who get COVID uh, will become it is made asymptomatic. Only 20% of the people have that. So that doesn't make it that everybody is going to be protected. So all these things that information comes out, that's we, we look at the scientists and physicians and authorities look at each and every of these issues and they investigate it. We have a we should be thank we should thank uh, uh, CDC. We have a, such a great system mm-hmm. that they look at any problem with vaccines. They have a nationwide system, and even there is a signal. I'm not saying there's evidence. Even the signal they investigate that. We have an example of a rotavirus vaccine where there was a signal years ago, and there were nine cases of an, in, disease, and the vaccine was removed from the market. And most people even now say that was probably not the cause of it, but a signal. Right. I think that what the public uh, has to get comfortable with is that, like, scientists, uh, science changes. Um, that it, 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 it grows. Our knowledge grows. We, we try things. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes things, uh, you know, at one stage of, of a disease, it could look like this. And then another stage, it changes. And so, like, you know, science is constantly moving forward and we're constantly learning new things. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you more, <clears throat> you know. What we may know today, we have to keep on looking at. We have to go by the best evidence today. Mm-hmm. Dr. Mobin Ranthor, Professor and Chief of Pediatric Infectious Disease at U, uh, Immunology at UF Health, Jax. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much. Delighted to be here. Good to see you.